So Oracle is a key player in the 5G space. Um, with the operators taking the first step at deploying 5G radio, uh, their intent is to connect up the 5G radio with the 4G core. And in order to do that, they're going to need some features and capabilities in that 4G core to interface and leverage the 5G radio. Oracle is already in the 4G core with our diameter signaling router, with our policy solution. And so enhancements to those products will enable the operators to take that first step and leverage the, the 5G radio. Um, beyond that, Oracle is ready to take the next step. We're already uh, developing um, an enhancement or an evolution of the PCRF to uh, the PCF function. That's the 3GPP um, standard evolution for policy into the 5G space. And Oracle's also uh, leveraging its uh, evolution of its diameter signaling router to the HTTP2 routing space uh, with a service proxy function and, and the various 3GPP functions uh, that surround both the PCF and the HTTP2 router. So Oracle's uniquely positioned with its presence in the 4G core to uh, enhance our products to leverage the 5G radio and then go with the customer to the next step and evolve the 4G core to the 5G core. It's going to be a little while. Um, the standards um, are continuing to evolve. Actually, we think the next iteration will be closer to September-ish, September-October timeframe. Um, but what we're seeing now is uh, the RFI, Request for Information, process starting, where operators are obviously aware of what's going on in the standards, and they're now going to be issuing RFIs. Some have already issued them for the core, and, but we expect to see more RFIs come out in the spring, in the early summer, and that's going to be mostly investigatory to hear from the suppliers, how are you suppliers envisioning implementing these standards? What do you think will uh, take hold? What do you think will be the first priority? And they'll leverage that to get, then get into the lab uh, and start uh, some proofs of concept. So we believe uh, we'll be well. We'll be ready for uh, lab entry and proofs of concept in the summer. With our agile development process, we'll be dropping, uh, providing drops into the customer labs, um, and use that to learn with the customer. Um, and then we think RFPs will come out in the next calendar year, um, mid to la second half of next calendar year, for for uh, broader deployment in 2020. I also wanted to get your take on, on network slicing, obviously a big change to the way core architecture works. Sure. It, it looks like 3GPP is having a little bit of a tricky time getting the standards complete around that, but in the context of network slicing and the efficiency that that brings to your network, do you think that operators are going to have a, a challenging period of time after they've invested in 5G RAN and some of the other elements, but before they can slice and see that efficiency as it relates to their resource and spectrum usage? Um, I think operators are going to gain efficiencies in two ways. Um, one, as you said, through the uh, ability to deploy a network slice. Um, and that's going to be key for the operators to provide a subscriber, whether it's a uh, subscriber like you and I with our handsets or an enterprise subscriber, uh, a unique experience based on that slice. Um, and it'll allow the, the CSP, the communication service provider, to deploy only what's needed for that slice. I think the operators will gain efficiencies two ways. One is deploying a slice just for the service that needs to be deployed. So they're not deploying big iron, uh, big, uh, uh, huge networks to uh, launch a first use case. And that's going to give the uh, consumer a unique experience uh, based on that slice. But I think the, the efficiencies, uh, even more so, might come from how the 
products will be deployed in the IoT and 5G space, where the operators are now asking for microservice-based deployments. So no longer applications that are complete vertical stacks of software, top to bottom, big monolithic pieces of software, but the architecture demands are going to be such that these solutions be deployed in a container-based microservices architecture. So only those microservices that are needed for that particular offering at that particular time will need to be turned up. It'll be far less con uh, consumer of, uh, of hardware, um, only used on demand, um, and it'll be a new way to deploy uh, very rapidly um, and turn it up, turn it down for the service and be very efficient that way. So I think uh, not only the network slice, but also the architecture uh, that will be asked for will enable efficiencies. If you're, if you're looking to your crystal ball for a moment, uh, 2020 time frame, what about 5G do you find most exciting about the potential? And then what do you find most concerning about the path to getting there? Sure, the excitement is the, the bandwidth that's going to be available uh, from the traditional device, for access by the traditional devices and new devices. New devices we haven't even thought of yet. Um, so that bandwidth is going to be tremendously um, utilized and to give us new services and new experiences that will be just phenomenal. It'll make what's happening now seem ancient. Um, you could see a little bit of what is possible with watching the Olympics. Um, one of the first experimenters of 5G radio was the SKT and KT operators for the, uh, the Olympics, the Winter Olympics. And if you think about it, the ability to have multiple camera angles for events, whether they be mounted uh, to the people's um, helmets or to the bobsleds or to their skis, and having um, the drones covering the events and having all that data, high def, high bandwidth data, being made available for a uh, user experience is just one tiny example of what's coming. Um, so I think that's the excitement, is the new user experience that's going to be enabled by the bandwidth. The challenge is going to be how to do that and, um, and capture that in an efficient way um, and to be able to turn it up and in these microservices architecture have an efficient way to uh, turn them up, orchestrate them, turn them down, and have it in a multi-vendor environment uh, be seamless for the operator. I think that's a challenge. So I think there's a big learning experience there. Theoretically, um, everyone can deploy in microservices, container-based microservices, but to orchestrate that efficiently um, and seamlessly uh, is going to be a big learning experience for both the operators and the suppliers. Thank you.